Hey, what is up, guys? It's your boy Swanky Swag. Back at it again with another video. And it's my prediction video. Prediction Fridays, or, well, prediction Saturday, depending on when this is posted, to be honest. But yeah, now I've been making a habit to post my videos a little too late. <laughs> But yeah, I'll, I'm going to try my best to change that. This week has just been really, really bad. But hey, we've been posting, so at least there's that. And yeah, my predictions have been... In the drain again. Um, which right now. <laughs> With Canelo and Anthony Martinez losing. Uh, I, I was really expecting myself to, you know, get it right this time. But hey, we're not right all the time, are we? <laughs> but we have some big events this time and a lot of them. Which I think this is where we break the swanky curse. We have four, which I think is the most we've had actually. We were about to have five because Floyd Mayweather was going to fight. But um, it was canceled due to some things. But it was canceled. So now we're at four. And the first one I want to mention is the most one that's been talked about, to be honest. Jermel Charlo versus Castaño 2. And to be honest, that one's going to be good. The first fight was already good. I had to look back at it. A lot of people disagree that it was a draw. They think Castaño won. But I'm going to be honest, I can see how it was a draw. And I can see what people are, have been arguing. And a lot of people say, oh, no, no, he's going to obliterate him. He's going to beat him. He's going to box the shit out of him. I'm going to be honest. Mel Charlo has lost before. And that kind of leads to me saying, I don't think he's gonna have him because Jermel Charlo lost. He then had a rematch that he got the win in amazing fashion. He got the knockout. And I'll be honest, I feel like that's something you can do this time as well. He may have not lost to Castaño, but it was a draw. And I think that's more than enough to motivate Jermel to knock him out. And I think it'll be in the later round, to be honest. The card itself, I don't see any other names that I recognize or at least too hyped other than Jaron Ennis and I'll be honest, I don't see that much of the hype behind him. If any of you guys can let me know. Of course. Let me know about some of his fights that maybe I haven't seen, to be honest, because I've only I've only seen his last few. And this one I feel like is gonna be his toughest one. It's they're both 0-0. But yeah. I think once I saw somebody in I saw somebody say that. If Jaron Ennis wins this one, then he can finally get a good amount of respect though. And yeah, if he wins, I feel like he could. I saw somebody mention this as well. That he could fight Danny Garcia, Adrian Broner, somebody like that. Even Mean Machine. So I'm gonna be honest, I would like to see that too. But that's enough for the first event. My prediction though, just to leave it off, on Jermel is I wanna say 10 or 11 run. And for Jaron Ennis, I think it's going to be unanimous. But yeah, we only count the main ones. Now on to the other one that I'm more hyped about. Just because it's, you know, a Mexican fighter. I'm Mexican, so I love seeing them fight. Surdo Ramirez. He's also from Sinaloa, where I'm from. So that's going to be amazing. Ah, the one thing bad is that his resume doesn't have the best names. A lot of people say, oh, all he fights are trash cans, man. All he fights is bums. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, and his opponent this time, I mean shit, kind of proves people's point. He's against, um, I believe, Dominic Boysel. So yeah, I'm gonna be honest, I'm expecting another knockout from this one as well. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't completely agree with when they say his resume doesn't have the most names or fights can be bums. I think his most noticeable fights have been his Jesse Hart fights. I love those. I love watching those. And also... At light heavy though, his most noticeable one has been Barrera, and that's about it. I'm pretty sure he was old as well, so there's that. But I think after he gets done with this win, if he wins, of course, which I think he will, in good fashion. I I'm expecting an early knockout to be honest. I think around maybe round five knockout, six. But yeah, I think after this, he could start getting some bigger names. You get Callum Smith, Anthony Yarde, the winner of Botsy or Richards. And maybe as well as Eliader Alvarez. He said he's coming back this year. So that's going to be good. And my final pick is Marcus Brown. Those would be some good fights. And I think he wins most of those. Calvin Smith is an interesting one. Marcus Brown. 
I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those would be some good fights that I would enjoy seeing. He says he wants to be Volmex, which I'm gonna be honest, I don't think is the move yet. A lot of people would complain as well. I was like, bro, he has no names on his on his resume. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, shit. The people I named, if he at least gets two or three of those, I think he'd be good, to be honest. So yeah, that one. I also like the co-main on that one. William Cepeda versus Rene Alvarado. Both are, both are good lightweight fighters. Rene Alvarado, I'm pretty sure he's fought Jojo Diaz, other lightweights. I'm pretty sure he fought Ryan. I'm not sure though, I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that one. But William Cepeda, his earlier fight this year was a second round KO, which I was amazed. And I'll be honest, he's undefeated right now. I'm pretty sure 25 and 0. So yeah, he, he's a good lightweight. He's a good lightweight. I would like to see him look against somebody like Jojo, maybe somebody like Linares, <laughs> Ryan even. Yeah, I, I can tell he's gonna be a champ of the lightweight division. I'm gonna be honest, I would like to see him versus El Rayo Valenzuela. That wouldn't be a bad one either. Both undefeated fighters, both from Mexico, yeah. Another fight could also be, I mean, all right, technical difficulty, guys. My sincere apologies. Somebody called me in the middle of recording. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Anyways, no, yeah. I think um, William Cepeda is also winning that one. I think it's going to be um, late TKO. And yeah, now, onto one that not many people are talking about, and it makes sense, to be honest. A thriller event. And we haven't seen either of these fighters in a long time. Super welterweight fighter. I'm pretty sure he's 9-0 right now. Probably a little more. So, yeah. His career isn't looking bad right now. And I'll be honest. I would like to see this. Nico Ali versus Evan Holyfield. That's a good fight. I'm pretty sure Nico is a middleweight, though. And Evan is a super welter. So, as long as they can meet eventually and wait. Maybe Evan moves up. That would be a nice fight. I feel like that would be an interesting main event, to be honest. Once they get a good record going, they fight good people as well, to be honest. Right now, they're fighting people at their level. Once they get up to the level where they're fighting good names, have a good resume, show that they're good boxers, that would be a good fight against each other. But yeah, my prediction for this event is Pulev by 10th round KO. Maybe TKO. We'll go TKO, we'll go TKO. And the co-main, um, pool of by unanimous, unanimous decision, and Evan Holyfield, I think he's winning that, to be honest. I don't, I'm not sure who his opponent is, I just know he's fighting. And now to the last one, which I don't know much about. So if any of you guys do, please let me know in the comments, comments what you think. Let me know what I'm missing. It's Tony Yoka versus Martin Bacoli. Heavyweight bout in France. I'm pretty sure it's a France fight between both of those two. And yeah, I'm not sure where it's going to be, though. <laughs> I don't know what platform it's on though, but Tony, he's 11 and 0 right now. So again, I don't know these fighters. So this is gonna be my first time seeing them. If any of you guys know, let me know in the comments. I can only go off of record to be honest. Um, but Coley, I think is 17 and one, one loss. And I know it doesn't make too much sense just cause he hasn't lost. I'm gonna go with Tony Yoka and to play it safe, I'll go unanimous decision. That's about it. <laughs> 
Um, yeah. So my official predictions for all four of these events are Jermel Charlo, 10 round KO. Surdo, six round KO. Pulev, 10th round KO as well. TKO, 10th round TKO. And Yoka, Tony Yoka, I go unanimous. So yeah, there's four fights. I get a chance to redeem myself in, you know, <laughs> win to loss ratio with my predictions. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know what fights you guys are looking forward. Let me know, you know, if I missed anything. And yeah, it's your boy, Swanky Swag. But actually, I can't leave yet because I got to remind you guys, 250 subs by my birthday. <laughs> I know it's a little unrealistic, but hey. I want to see if we can get there. I should have told you guys earlier. I'm going to be honest. I should have mentioned it. But it didn't come to my head until a couple days ago. So, yeah. With that being said, for real this time, it's your boy Swanky Swag. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And go follow my Instagram down below. I'm also trying to reach a goal over there. 100 followers. Yeah. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.